All right, guys, coming to you with another What's Next. This is on the former unified super bantamweight world champion, Daniel Roman, and also former world uh, bantamweight world champion, um, Juan Carlos Payano. These two guys squared off on Showtime pay-per-view undercard on September 26th when they, uh, it, it was a WBC eliminator. And Payano actually almost beat Roman. I mean, it was a very close fight. The judges had it 116-112 for Roman on all three. I don't know how they scored it like that. I mean, you could, you could argue very easily that Payano won the fight. Um, even uh, Showtime had Payano winning the first seven rounds. And then Roman made a really good comeback and um, got back in the fight and swept maybe the last four or five rounds. But prior to that, it was a close fight, and, and you could very much so argue Payano won the fight. But uh, Roman got a close decision victory. Um, nobody's really seeming to argue a robbery, but it was very close. So, um, you know, let's look at what's next for Daniel Roman and Juan Carlos Payano. We'll start with the, unif the former unified champ, Daniel Roman. Um, it's really up in the air right now because the fight with Payano was supposed to decide, um, possibly decide number one. I don't think the WBC's made their their uh, their choice yet, but even if Roman is number one, it might not matter because Ray Vargas might be in line to fight um, <coughs> to fight newly crowned WBC champion Luis Neri next. Vargas gave up the belt and became the champion in recess because of an injury he suffered in training. Now, if he decides he's good to come back, he gets a shot whenever he wants as being champion in recess. Uh, so he moves in front of the mandatories. Now, do I think Vargas is going to want to do that and go straight into Luis Neri? I don't know, man. Um, that's that's a tough one because there are other options, you know, for Vargas to take. He could fight Roman. He could fight Payano. Um, you know, and those might be better options for him to shake off some rust and let Neri fight the other guy, um, which would probably be maybe Roman or Castro. Uh, I think it's Carlos Castro. Um, fight him, and then uh, the winners lock horns. But, um, you know, for Roman, I think he wants a title shot next. I think he's looking at that fight. I think he's looking at, you know, he's looking at Luis Neri. I also think, he, though, he, I also think he's looking at the winner of Mirajan Akhamadayev and Reske Iwasa. They're fighting in a mandatory title fight in likely in November on an undercard on the zone. Now, here's the interesting thing about that either way. If Akhamadayev wins, Roman barely lost to him by a split decision earlier this year in January. Now, would would the two sides be able to come together between the zone and the PBC now? Now that now that Daniel Roman's fighting for the PBC. Or would um if Iwasa were to pull off the, the win over Akamadaya, which I think is possible, Iwasa's been working with the PBC prior to that. So would Iwasa fight Daniel Roman? I definitely think that's possible. So, yeah, I think Roman's got his eye on that one, as he should. Um, other than that, you know, uh, Brandon Figueroa is a possible option if Roman wants to take that, that chance, and he might. He just might. That's a good matchup. So um, I'm leaning towards Roman possibly fighting Luis Neri next. But I really do think he's looking at the Akhmadayev and Iwasa fight very closely. And I really think it could go either way. So we'll see what happens. That's on Daniel Roman, though, the former unified Super Bantamweight champ. Now, Juan Carlos Payano, he's breaking into my top 10 at 122. You know, I know the guy's lost three of his last four fights. I think he's lost all four of his losses have come in his last six or seven fights. But you know what? This guy didn't, his first fight a few years ago that he lost by majority decision. He didn't lose by much. That was to Rache Warren, a very, very talented fighter. Um, then he got knocked out against Neua Anue in the World Boxing Super Series quarterfinals season two. You know, first round. But Anue is the monster. He is a fucking animal. He's a beast. So, you know, to me, no shame there. Then Luis Neri knocked him out last year in the ninth round. And he was getting beat. You know, so... You, but all that was at 118 or less. Now, he's fighting at 122. He moves up. A lot of people thought he was going to be a tune-up guy for Roman. And he fought his ass off. And you could argue that he won that fight. And Roman entered the year the number one fighter at 122. And I still have him ranked number two. Um, or, you know, maybe number three. You could argue that. But, yeah, I mean, 
Payano fought his ass off in a new weight class. So for me, against one of the top dogs at 122, Payano deserves to be in the top 10. And, you know, the big question is what's next for Payano? I say he keeps his options fucking open. Um, Brandon Figueroa is available. Go after him. Look at the winner of Akhmadayev and Iwasa, possibly. Possibly showdown with uh, a rematch with Roman or Luis Neri if he wants it or Ray Vargas in a comeback fight. I think Payano needs to keep his phone open and, on, and, and ready to go. Get back in the ring. Capitalize on this strong performance right here in a fight that very easily could have went his way and see what happens. All right, guys. That's it. That's the what's next on both Daniel Roman, the former super, uh, unified super bantamweight champ and former bantamweight champion Juan Carlos Payano after their big showdown on Showtime pay-per-view on September 26th. Hope you guys enjoyed it. True boxing. Been here with the truth.